So today's Creative Mornings, welcome. Uh, it's sunny here in Treaty 1 territory, a little cloudy today. Um, I think I'm feeling the effects of the full moon. Uh, we are, um, or I am coming to you from the traditional lands of the Ojibwe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota and Dene Nations, and the homeland to the Red River Métis. Um, I also acknowledge that the uh, water that I'm drinking today is sourced from Shoal Lake 40 First Nation. Um, and I'm very cognizant that many of our Indigenous communities lack clean drinking water. This land acknowledgement that we uh, use for Creative Mornings isn't something that we just say. Uh, it's a foundational understanding of how we work as an organization, guiding our continual learning and unlearning process. This has especially been the case this past month with the discovery of the bodies of 215 children found at the former Kamloops Residential School and the discovery in the last few days of the over 700 unmarked graves at Cowessis First Nation at the former site of the Maryvale Indian Residential School. These heart-wrenching moments and those inevitably yet to come have reinforced the importance of community through the sharing of grief, anger, and the knowledge of our collective and brutal history. The fact that it's Indigenous Peoples Month, the 150th anniversary of Treaty One signing, and Pride Month highlights the importance of bringing community together, like at Creative Mornings events, to share stories, to hear diverse perspectives, and to learn from our speakers and from one another, which I have no doubt we'll do today. Today's global theme and speaker reminds us that residential schools interrupted and in many cases silenced the passing down of matrilineal knowledge, including language, culture, and traditions. I'm grateful for our time together today to recognize and celebrate the important contributions of Indigenous women and life givers through the leadership of our speaker, Natalie Pembrun. It is through our collective commitment to gathering as a creative community, to listening, to taking action, and as our Creative Mornings Manifesto says, to give a damn, that we together can continually seek truth and reconciliation in this time and for generations to come. I wanna thank you for being here today. I also wanna thank and give a shout out to our Red River College uh, students from our ASL program and our interpreters, Mandy and Tracy today for providing accessibility for the deaf community for our events. We're very committed as you'll hear later to diversity and inclusion. And I wanna thank Red River College's students and instructors for providing this with the opportunity to be accessible. We are connected today to our global community. I'm so pleased to have members of our global community here uh, by our monthly theme. So our hashtags for today, and we do encourage you to share screenshots from the event uh, on social media through hashtag CM Winnipeg or WPG and hashtag CM Matriarchy and uh, at CM under slash Winnipeg. As I said earlier, my name's Christine Watson. Uh, I'm proud to be uh, the co-host for Creative Mornings Winnipeg along with Christian Robin. Um, I'm also, my day job is the Vice President Academic and Research at Red River College. It's very pleased, I'm very pleased to have Red River College members here today and a shout out to my Red River College friends. Um, and today I also happen to be your MC, so wearing multiple hats. So I'm gonna give a quick rundown of what's gonna happen at today's event. At every Creative Mornings event, we have a musical guest uh, in Winnipeg to celebrate the musical talent in Manitoba. And today's musical talent is Diaphany. After hearing from Diaphany, you'll be invited to breakout rooms to do an activity around the theme of matriarchy together with others. And as Scott said, we'll invite you to choose your own breakout rooms. And if you don't choose one, we'll randomly assign you one. Uh, that'll be about an eight minute uh, session. And then we'll invite you back to the main stage to share some of your conversations. And then we're gonna hear from today's speaker, Natalie Pembrun. While the main presentation is on like right now, um, Scott has given you some instructions for whether you wanna see gallery view or speaker view. And uh, we do invite you to keep your cameras on uh, depending on how you're feeling this morning uh, because we love to see your smiling morning faces. We, uh, as Creative Mornings Winnipeg decided um, 
<laughs> Manitobans uh, tend to go away to their cabins and their beaches and to uh, away from their screens, hopefully during the month of July. So we will not be offering a Creative Mornings event in July, um, but we will be back in a virtual format in August. And our global theme for August is release. We will be welcoming special guests Lise Brown, who is here today, so give us a shout out to Lise, to talk about releasing your creativity through outdoor adventures, which is perfect for August and perfect for the theme of release. The tickets are actually available now, so we'll put the link in the chat both now and at the end of the event so you can go up and register. And that way you'll get our reminders so that when you come back from your holidays uh, in August, you'll be ready to be inspired by Creative Mornings Winnipeg and our speaker, Lise Brown. It's now time to say thank you to our global and local partners, because without them, we wouldn't get to do this fabulous work in building a community of creatives in Winnipeg. So our first thank you is to MailChimp. MailChimp has supported Creative Mornings for 11 years. And like Creative Mornings, MailChimp deeply values community. They have a small insider community for freelancers and agencies that help small businesses succeed, and it's called MailChimp and Co. So it's designed to help you grow your business and expand your expertise and get some special perks. And it's free. So we really recommend that you take a look. I also want to thank Skillshare, our global partner for online learning. Skillshare is an online learning community. And I can personally tell you that some of the um, Skillshare courses that I've taken have been absolutely both uh, extremely interesting and also transformative in terms of how I approach my own creative practice. I also want to thank our local partners. They're listed in the slide. They're here today. They are amazing for supporting the work that we do every day. So give a shout out, please, to our local partners. And finally, to our Creative Morning Steering Committee. They work so incredibly hard to bring you these events every month. And I am grateful for their enthusiasm and energy. Um, they keep me going, they keep this event going, and I'm so grateful for all of them. So a shout out to our steering committee members. Thank you for your commitment and dedication. And now it's time for some wonderful local music. Thanks to our partnership with Manitoba Music and Creative Manitoba. So we have a special musical performance by the Manitoba band Diaphany. Diaphany actually means the art of recreating stained glass on translucent paper. Its tremulous nature defines genre and makes each song part of the ephemera, never permanent. Led by writer and singer Heather Thomas, Diaphany was born out of a desire to release the shackles of the high risk, low reward music industry system and forget that music is a business. Every song is an exploration of styles and moods and a meeting of different minds, bound together by the through line of Thomas's expressive and ethereal voice. So welcome, Diaphany, and the song title is Something Better. I'll see you after the song. Sorry, one second.
idea in my head, oh my dear Try to see through the dark But the glass isn't clean Why can't we look ahead, see the end of the line Instead we stumble back most Most of the time great way to start our day seeking something better that's why we're here that's why creative mornings exists that's why we're coming together as a community to seek something better together so thank you for being here and thank you diaphany for that beautiful song we were we are going to hear from diaphany again um, at the end of the event so stick around uh, for their second song um, we always have two songs from our performers and uh, it's a really special moment for us to be able to celebrate Manitoba music. So thanks to Diaphany. Our global theme this month, as I hope you know by now, is matriarchy. Matriarchy highlights the holding and transfer of power, lineage, knowledge, culture, and traditions from women, through women, and for women. Matriarchy also highlights the important powerful roles that women play in our personal, professional, social, and political systems. We're going to invite you now to step into breakout rooms, which if you haven't noticed, are named the color of the pride rainbow flag this month to acknowledge our pride celebrations. The blue breakout room will have the ASL interpretive support for those who require it. This will be an eight minute activity. So while you're in the rooms, we invite you to share stories of strong and powerful female influences in your life. It'll be about eight minutes. We invite you all to make sure that there's space and time for everybody to share a story. And then when you come back from your breakouts, we'll be asking everyone all at once, uh, for those of you who are with us last month, to share a photo or the name of someone on your screen who has been a strong female influence in your life, who's passed down knowledge or power to you in some way. So as we're coming back, um, we're going to invite you all uh, at once to show a picture of, um, of a person that has uh, a female influence in your life that has passed down knowledge. Um, and we invite you all to hold up the name on a piece of paper or the picture of someone uh, who has passed knowledge down to you. Um, and then we're going to take a screenshot of it so that we can all see. And I invite you all to put it onto gallery view so that everybody can see everybody else's picture or name all at once. And I can tell you that it's a very powerful moment. So um, I invite you to do that. I'll show you how I'm going to do it. So there is, oh, hold on. There is mine. This is my wife, Elisa. And she has passed down knowledge to me um, through her heritage. Uh, she's West Indian by heritage. Um, and she has passed down a love of and knowledge of West Indian culture and especially food. So I'm very grateful to Elisa for, for sharing that with me. So are you ready? On three, we're going to invite you to pulled up the pictures or the names of people who uh, have influenced your life. Are you ready? One, two, three. Awesome. Oh, 
I see some beautiful, I see a beautiful star blanket on Christie's and Tom, I see somebody on your phone. I see Mama with Natalie. Oh, it's wonderful. Thank you. Oh, Christine, why? <laughs> Brenda's got wine name. How lovely. Thank you, Brenda. That's so sweet. Oh, this is wonderful. Scott's got one too. Scott, do you want to tell us who yours is? Oh, that's wonderful. We also have Sarah here. Um, as you were all in breakout rooms, uh, Sarah's actually joining us from Toronto. Sarah, I hope you don't mind me calling you out. And mm -hmm. her mom, so was it your mother? No, my mother's in this picture. Your mother's in the picture. With my with my mother-in-law. Uh, my mother's mother was a St. Mars. She was a midwife, Métis midwife, um, outside of uh, Winnipeg. As That's well wonderful. as a teacher, of course. Uh, and, jo <laughs> and Jocelyn is holding up a picture of Natalie, I bet. Is that right, Jocelyn? <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> Oh, you're muted, Jocelyn. With, without our children, uh, we have no purpose in our lives. And uh, But I'm very inspired with all the work she's done. Oh, in that's the community. wonderful. Okay. Well, thank you, Jocelyn, for being here. It's lovely to have a mother and daughter here today. So thank you. All right, so um, it is time now. We've, uh, we've anticipated this moment um, to uh, welcome our speaker. But before we do that, I'm very pleased to introduce uh, Mayo. Mayo is our Creative Mornings Winnipeg videographer, um, and uh, his full name is Olumayoa Um He's also known as Mayo, and he's a passionate storyteller, and he's a proud committee member of Creative Mornings Winnipeg. Uh, he was the one, for those of you who've seen our animated video, he's the one who designed and produced the animated video. For the past eight years, he's founded and owned and operated Red Moon Creatives, which is a virtual, a visual communications firm that helps businesses be seen, heard, and experienced. He's got a huge variety of experience with Red Moon Creatives um, and a combination of strong technical skills, varied experience, and an outgoing personality, which I can totally attest to. And he's become somewhat of a unicorn in the industry. Throughout his journey, he's met so many amazing people along the way. And for Mayo, um, it has always been about people and relationships because everything starts there. And I know for a fact that Mayo brings his heart, his soul, and his enthusiasm and passion to everything he does, including his role as a steering committee on Creative Mornings Winnipeg. So Mayo will be sharing our Creative Mornings manifesto this morning and introducing our speaker. Over to you, Mayo. Wow, thank you, Christine. That's beautiful. I was kind of tired, you know, <laughs> before this started, but you just woke me up, so thank you. <laughs> all right, good morning, everybody. I'm happy to uh, see all your beautiful faces and for you guys to be a part of this. It's gonna be a special event today. And so I'm gonna go through the manifesto. So Creative Mornings, sorry, Creative Mornings chapters around the world celebrate creative talent, but also promote an open space to connect with like-minded people. Creative Mornings is guided by a powerful manifesto, which we read at every event. So here's the manifesto. Everyone is creative. A creative life requires bravery and action, honesty and hard work. We are here to support you, to celebrate with you and encourage you to make the things you love. We believe in the power of community. We believe in giving a damn. We believe in face-to-face -face connections, in learning from others, in jazz hands, virtual claps, and virtual snaps. We bring together people who are driven by passion and purpose and confident that they will inspire one another and inspire change in neighborhoods and cities around the world. Everyone is welcome. The Winnipeg chapter has also made a commitment to reflecting diversity and ensuring inclusion for our events. Located in one of the most diverse communities in North America, we are as inclusive as we are creative, and we will be creative in order to achieve inclusion. We believe in the value of a diversity of perspectives, audiences, and industries as we create safe events to debate and discuss what it means to be creative. We will celebrate multiple approaches and points of view, 
And we will be mindful and purposeful in building a culture where these differences are not only valued, but celebrated. I'm now very pleased to welcome Natalie Pamburn to the Creative Morning stage. Yes, 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 yes. Natalie Pamburn is a Franco-Manitoba Métis midwife who has practiced for 17 years in urban, rural, and remote communities across Canada and the world. Committed to midwifery care, sorry, committed to midwifery care that is accessible, equitable, and culturally safe, Natalie works primarily in Winnipeg with Indigenous teens and newcomers to Canada. As a past president of the Canadian Association of Midwives, Natalie is the first ever Indigenous midwife to serve as president of the organization and served on the board for nine years. Natalie is a founding member of the National Aboriginal Council of Midwives for the last 16 years and served a two-year term as the organization's co-chair. Currently, Natalie is an advocacy and policy advisor with the council, focusing on federal files related to eliminating anti-Indigenous racism in the Canadian healthcare system through Indigenous-led education initiatives to grow the Indigenous midwifery primary health workforce. <laughs> Natalie is a board member of Grand Challenges Canada with a cross appointment to the Indigenous Innovation Council, empowering First Nation, Inuit and Métis innovators and communities to identify and solve their own challenges, transform lives and drive inclusive growth and health through innovation. Please help me welcome Natalie Pambra. Thanks, Mayo. What a mouthful of an introduction. <laughs> you did that so well, with, even without a tired face. <laughs> Super. Well, I'm going to give Scott a minute to put up my presentation um, slide. Thank you, Scott. And uh, just want to say good morning and bonjour, Tanse. Um, I want to acknowledge that we're in that full strawberry moon today um, on the cusp of the summer solstice. And I want to thank the organizers and the volunteers of Creative Mornings Winnipeg chapter for inviting me this morning um, uh, to share uh, from Treaty One territory um, in the heart of the Red River settlement. So I'm proud to live in my ancestral territory and also want to acknowledge um, and thank uh, our host this morning, Christine, for um, centering us on the realities um, and the truths that are coming uh, forward as we learn um, about our history and uh, about these children and uh, I really appreciate the manifesto of creative mornings and it's time to give a damn folks and if this isn't waking you up I'm not sure what will so I encourage you to have the hard conversations to support your indigenous um, friends and families and um, to spring into action um, the work that I do every day um, involves uh, dealing with racism and in particular in our healthcare system. Um, but I really invite you, it's, it's an invitation, it's a call to action. Um, and and uh, I, one of my mothers uh, is a residential school survivor who uh, worked with residential school survivors because she speaks the language in taking their testimonies and in attempting to uh, seek um, some type of restorative justice. Um, she also took the Truth and Reconciliation Commission testimonies um, and is a trauma-informed counselor who goes into communities to support communities. And so, um, when you have a moment where you feel a little stuck in your grief or in your emotion, we have to think about the strength of the people who, 
who have survived these experiences and who who um, are showing us that tremendous leadership um, uh, in in our attempt to heal um, and and seek restorative justice in in these um, spheres. So, um, thanks for indulging my need to to take that space this morning and. Uh, and I also want to acknowledge um, that the water that sustains my life uh, is sourced from Shoal Lake 40 First Nations and that uh, ensuring that Shoal Lake residents have the same rights and access to clean drinking water as, as we do is just as important to me as the work that I do um, as a midwife. Uh, because as a midwife, I hold that role and that responsibility and that relationship um, to be the caregiver to the water and to the life givers. So these um, sacred responsibilities are framed by my own understanding um, of matriarchy. So I think it's a good idea to start by defining matriarchy. Um, for me, <clears throat> oh, and I would be remiss to say good morning, mom, and thanks for joining me this morning. <clears throat> because matriarchy for me was defined by my mothers, by my aunties, by my grandmothers, and by genderful people, by Indigenous midwives, and, and by strong Indigenous matriarchal leaders across Turtle Island. So for me, central to my understanding of matriarchy is that value of upholding creation and that relationality so when we uphold creation, um, it's an understanding that everything on this earth is alive and has spirit and has to be respected. And that relationality is a way of being that describes the interconnectedness between all of creation and kinship. And it's, it's our family, it's our community, it's our extended human and more than human relations. And I chose this piece of art because um, it was actually part of a, a um, like, uh, in Galerie, like when they show the, the, the various art pieces, they actually juxtaposed um, this Australian art with microscopic um, imagery. And it shows um, that uh, our Indigenous knowledges are are so deep and so anchored and that ability to mirror um, uh, the different knowledges uh, is, is present. And so um, for me, indigenous matriarchal knowledge reflects that relationality and that kinship to all of creation and in, in everything that we do. So um, matriarchy is the fulfillment of, of women, girls, of genderful folks, autonomy, our agency, um, and our power once again. So not power over men or others, but a transformative power um, that grows from respecting ourselves and equality with others in all the diversity of our identity, of our experiences and our abilities. So matriarchy for me, it's not defined in opposition to patriarchy. Um, matriarchies boast a more egalitarian and balanced leadership. Um, and I think it is important though for us to understand um, patriarchy um, because throughout our colonial history um, and how it's applied itself to women and particularly indigenous women, <clears throat> to study that doesn't dishonor the resiliency or the strength that, <clears throat> that it, they represent today, but it's required in order for us to return um, women, girls and genderful people to their rightful place and their equal status in the world today. So um, understanding that colonization um, is a gendered project is a really important um, lens with which to view uh, things in order for us to raise our women up. So before we launch into uh, the matriarchal and how it's infused my life with creativity, um, as a gender non-binary person, it's important for me to ensure that we embrace a genderful perspective um, as we talk about matriarchy today and who it includes. So genderful is defined as a positive identity um, that's unique to each person. 
constantly evolving and inclusive of all forms of self-expression. And within the Indigenous social construct of gender, um, a community couldn't survive without every member and all of their contributions. Um, there was real value in understanding the importance um, and contribution of everyone to the whole community. So one teaching that I still hear to this day is no one is more important than another. And so um, the Indigenous worldview of like valuing everybody's uh, contribution included multiple genders. And that, that type of gender system uh, has been affected by colonial thought. And I see that, you know, these emerging generations are, are, um, are reclaiming that piece and the gender so that our children can grow up in such a way that they have that freedom and to express their personalities. Um, and it also contributes to the community by capitalizing on the skills of each individual and using every member's intelligence um, and passion to the fullest extent. All right, now that we've covered uh, ideas around gender, we can shift our focus and look at women's roles and status in the community to better understand matriarchy and its expressions in Indigenous communities. So <clears throat> there, in many Indigenous communities, there were a lot of gender roles um, that were traditionally pretty clearly defined. Um, and men and women and genderful people would have different responsibilities to carry out in their communities. So women were often known as the community caretakers and the primary teachers of children. They made decisions on land use, um, ensured food security by gathering, growing, preparing, preserving. Um, they led community negotiations. Um, indigenous women were in many cases able to choose the role that they took in within their community. Um, and matriarchal society uh, systems, um, we see those kinship models uh, or clan systems in a lot of um, indigenous nations across Turtle Island. So this is why it's often said that indigenous women are the backbone of our communities. So today I wanna to share the resilience and the vitality of indigenous women and girls and genderful people and how they've led me to live a more creative life. Starting at the beginning with our own personal creation stories because we all started our lives in the wombs of our mothers. So in those sacred waters of our mothers, we, we call that, those are the original or the first waters and my midwife mentor and elder, um, Gaji Cook, said, women are the first environment. Um, in pregnancy, our bodies sustain life. At the breast of women, generations are nourished. In this way, we as women are the earth. So for me, what that means is what happens to the land and the waters is happening to women and girls and genderful people. And the matrilineal reminds us that we're deeply rooted um, in our relationship with the land, that we're not separate from the land, that it's in our DNA and we carry it in our bodies. And the matrilineal truths return us to that knowledge. Um, it awakens us, it connects us, it's our blood memory. It's that sacred water that pulses in our veins and our hearts connecting us to our ancestors History and memory are in the land as well as in our bodies um, through experiences and sensations that are remembered, passed on, inherited in the same way that genetic material is transmitted from one generation to another. So the matrilineal reminds us that we were once already persistent or present, pardon me, biologically um, in the bodies of our grandmothers as our mothers were in their womb with all of their ovums. So think about it. It means um, every female fetus, including your mother, developed all the eggs she'll ever have while a fetus still inside of her own mother. And of course, one of those eggs ultimately developed into you. So in reality, you started your life inside your grandmother. <laughs> Now this is where it gets even more magical. Uh, if you yourself were lucky enough to be pregnant or become pregnant, um, 
with a female, you can gaze down on your growing belly and envision yourself carrying your potential future grandchildren inside of you. So that is the responsibility of the matrilineal to the generations yet to come. Our kinship ties are deeply woven to our, matri our maternal relations to our, and our maternal relations are deeply woven into the land. And so we're responsible to think of the future of our nation. We're nation builders. When we embrace these profound matrilineal truths in our creative practice, we understand the interconnectedness of all things. We move beyond binary thinking towards individual and social creativity. We unsilo our thought process. Like my mentor, Gaji, who's connected um, reproductive and environmental justice initiatives and used creativity to advance important social issues. The truths also remind us of our kinship ties and the importance of sharing our creative process as a collective, taking time to be with our human family in that immersive experience, sharing perspectives, in dialogue, creating space for reflexivity. And that's where the reality appears as multiple and open to change. And I think that that's where that collective sort of wondering begins to happen. And those innovative social, uh, uh, or the innovative um, becomes like thinkable and ultimately achievable. And when we talk about coming from our grandmother's wombs, that's a space to awaken our creative minds uh, to see ourselves beyond um, our individuality. It invites you to explore your history, to learn about your relatives and the land where they came from because the natural world is also your relative. And to ground yourself in the narrative that has informed who you are. The understanding of your kinship structure that formed you and the continuity that you carry in relation to who you are and what you are today. That creativity is awakened as you understand your ancestors' aims or what were their concerns or the qualities and the gifts that, um, that they carried and you inherited. So having a sense of self that extends into time and space, including your kin and spanning generations gives you that new perspective. And in many ways, I feel like the creative process is always that exploration or that uh, desire to, um, to see yourself or to express yourself. So we've gone through conception and gestation in these deep biological relational uh, beginnings of our consciousness and growing in our understanding of how it relates to creative living and living a creative life. And that belly of the life giver is full and ripe and the birth, the birth um, is imminent. So you all knew this part was coming, right? <laughs> the childbirth metaphor has been paired with artistic creativity and human pro-creativity since time immemorial, I think. As a midwife, I think everybody's giving birth all the time, conceiving uh, an idea and working with it and then giving birth to it um, can be anything. It can be a painting, it can be a meal, it can be a day, it can be a baby. And the concept of pain in that process is real. Um, facing the fear of uncertainty and sitting with that tension of transition can feel scary. Um, and feelings are that life energy like registering in our body. And matriarchy reminds us that that pain is productive. And life givers in these moments of pain have shown me that they're inventive, dauntless, resourceful, and unrelenting, all ingredients for creativity. Fostering creativity often involves changing how you look at the world. Birthing gives you a different perspective. You're dealing with 
a really novel situation. You're discovering a side of yourself that's completely new. And all of that's useful to creativity, which connects us to that novelty. So what is this thing we call creativity and how do we connect to it? Matriarchy says, creativity is your mother, not just for birthing you, but for sharing all her skills and knowledge and the ways of being. Creativity is being filled with wonder. Matriarchy says, creativity is seeing the connectedness between you and all of creation. Creativity is in the land, creativity is in the water, and you're not separate from the land and the water. They're your relatives and you are theirs, all my relations. Creativity is inclusive. Creativity values everyone and their contribution. Creativity is connecting to your ancestors. Creativity is broadening your sense of self through time and space, situating yourself within the web of creation. Matriarchy says, the birthplace of creativity is found in the relational. Cultivate creativity through your kinship relations. Creativity is deep listening. Creativity is born beyond the binary where multiple perspectives can exist. Creativity is open to change. Birthing new ideas can be painful. Transitions are the cusp of creativity. Do not give up. Do not quit. Pain is productive. It means you are transforming. Creativity is allowing yourself to be vulnerable. Creativity is being open. The birth is imminent. Creativity makes you stronger. Soon you're sitting with that new life for all to see. Creativity allows you to relish in these new perspectives and give birth to new possibilities. So, miigwech, anushik, niawen, marci, hawa, Hey, Chu, Masi Cho. Merci, thank you for listening to me this morning. I'd like to give thanks to Natalie for her presentation because I think a lot of our young um, women uh, would uh, certainly benefit if that could be provided to them um, and provide them that knowledge so that they can feel uh, that strength uh, because we are the keepers of the medicine and we're talking about not you know medicine of life of the earth and we are the decision maker which has been removed um, and we should get find that balance again um you know, we are the keepers of the genealogy. And I think my daughter would know very much how I go into a lot of the history to provide that strength that we understand from our kingship and our ceremonial uh, ceremonies for uh, the care of that passage of that newborn. Um, you know, and the rites of passage as they grow older from, you know, uh, whether it's birth, the placenta or the rites of passage when they go into a young woman. Uh, and the same with the marriage and funeral, like this is part of the midwives. Um, and as women, we were the keepers of making sure that that transition from to um, the other world was um, done in a good way so that they could move from that into that spirit world. So um, I think that's all I'm going to say is that it would be good that we could create a point of gatherings of these grandmother's gatherings that May Louise Campbell used to hold on her land that we need to create that space again for our, our young ones and our older ones and our elders and our knowledge keepers to come together more regularly, I guess. I'm not saying it's not happening. It is happening. But I think we should start really thinking of collaborating and interconnecting with one another so that uh, 
we can continue that momentum to uh, just create that better balance in our ways of being. Tim Gwich. Hi, Nathalie. Um, just maybe on a bit of a lighter side, um, can you tell us about the art you have behind you? Does it have any significance or meaning or is it just mm -hmm. something that you really liked? Oh, yeah, this is a, that's a funny story. I was just telling um, this, yeah, I was saying that this was my backdrop for our creative mornings uh, uh, on matriarchy. So unfortunately, um, I do not know this artist, though I tried to research them. Um, I, from the signature that I see, that's also in like pottered clay. Um, sorry, I'm not good at this being a camera person. Um, the... I found it in a vintage store uh, in Winnipeg a long time ago. And then I, a year later, I found this piece um, in the vintage, in a different vintage store or like a secondhand store. And then a few years later, um, this one. And so uh, this artist, I think the name, so if I'm reading it correctly, is Rel Relinac and... Um, and uh, yeah, I would have found that in the start of my midwifery career. And uh, it just really spoke to me that that strong um, matriarchal like uh, imagery of being around the fire. And uh, and so it was just funny when I kept finding the pieces and I was certain that they were from the same collection. Um, and it was just very it was kind of a funny moment of a coming together of these pieces um, as they had randomly been <laughs> wherever they had been. <laughs> they were reunited. You brought the family back together. <laughs> yeah, bringing the family together. <laughs> Great question. Thank you. Any other questions before we close our session today? I just wanted to say um, one thing, but I'm happy to take a question to the last um, the last photo of the presentation um, is a Christy Belcourt image um, that uh, has to do with like rearing the next generations. And it's actually um, friends of ours started a birth center in Toronto called Seven Generation Midwives. And in the birth center, um, their wall size uh, of, of like those wall size images of, of Christy Belcourt's drawings are there. And it's sort of a commentary. And um, what you couldn't see because I couldn't get the whole image was um, the, the bottom and the top line are have televisions um, built into them. And it's sort of like this narrative of like, what are we teaching our children? And, um, and, and sort of reminding us. And so uh, I think it just, it reminds us of that powerful um, role that matriarchs play in passing on that knowledge. And I just want to say thanks to my mom um, because without her, I wouldn't be where I am. So merci mama. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you, Natalie. And thank you mom for yeah. being here today to celebrate your daughter and your, um, and the, the life lines and the threads of generations to come. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you all for being here today. Um, if you wanna hang out afterwards, uh, we're gonna play another song from Diaphany, um, mm -hmm. but you're welcome to hang out afterwards if you wish. I know some of, uh, some of you need to get on with your days, but uh, we really do appreciate when you, just, when you spend your Friday mornings once a month with us at Creative Mornings. Um, we look forward to seeing you in August and very, very pleased again to have Lise Brown uh, joining us on the theme of release. Um, and so I know Lise is here today and very pleased to have her join us. Uh, the tickets for the upcoming event are already available. So feel free to sign up um, and uh, so that you can get your spot and get your ticket and, and be ready to go for the fall. We also have some really exciting speakers coming for the fall that we'll announce uh, in August. Um, if you have anything to share with us, uh, feel free to drop us a note at winnipeg at creativemornings.com. Uh, that's our email and we're happy to get a note from you with uh, your feedback. Uh, we always want to try and do things better. So um, uh, always welcome your feedback. Also, please feel free to upload your screenshots for today. Um, if, uh, if you're um, hosting any art, we would ask that you uh, acknowledge the artist um, and certainly acknowledge uh, Natalie as well. 
Um, we're very pleased now to have another song by Diaphany called Closing the Door, which we thought was very fitting for uh, this moment, uh, even though Natalie has helped us open the doors to creativity. Um, Diaphany's song is Closing the Door. So take a few minutes to listen and reflect and then carry on with your day. Thank you for being here today. And thank you, Natalie. How can a person be so uncertain and pull back the curtain? So many years lose all my worth just by showing my hurt like the best I can ask for is hiding my fears. Closing the door.